What's going on guys and girls? I'm gonna try to explain an issue that I've got going on with the motorhome. For some of y'all that don't know, this is a 1997 Winnebago Vectra. Oh, I'm gonna have to pause this. I was getting ready to tell y'all that I was waiting on parts and I have been and they're pulling up right now. So let me go meet this guy, I'll be right back. All right. But the UPS man is leaving. And uh, well, this kind of throws my plan off now. I'm not sure exactly how I'll put this together, but I had some downtime. I just finished washing a customer's motorhome, getting ready to seal the roof on that one, and I'm waiting on a new carburetor for their own and generator. Um, that wasn't on the truck today, so I hope I'll get that tomorrow. But I was going to just do some uh, rundown, kind of talking about this new problem that I've found on my motorhome, and I'm sure somebody else out there will see this same issue. Um, Now that the part just came in, I think what I'm going to do is just take the camera down there and we're going to try to swap these out. This is not going to be fun. It's not going to be pretty. It's not. Uh, it's in a bad spot. I've already pulled the, the cover off of where I've got to replace this sensor. Um, but man, I really don't even know how to get started. There's no other videos on YouTube of this issue yet. There is some threads out there. I found quite a few different people that have wrote a blog about this issue. What it is, it's the auto park feature on these motorhomes, specifically the P30 chassis. Um, I believe that's going to be from 1989 to around 1998. Um, but I still, I'm, I'm learning as I go on this. There's still a few things I need to read. But from what I've gathered, my issue is going to be this... Uh, sensor but what's going on is in my motorhome the auto park indicator light came on a few weeks ago and the motorhome still seemed fine I had a little issue putting it in gear it was hanging up like getting out of reverse and going into neutral and drive it would go right into reverse fine but I noticed the light, I plugged my OBD2 scanner in and I got a transmission code but it wouldn't be specific. It wouldn't tell me exactly what was going on. So I just went with it. You know, it's hard to fix something that isn't broke. So I figured I'd just wait it out and when the problem got worse then I would fix it. Well, it went straight from a warning to broke broke meaning the brakes locked up on the motorhome and I could barely creep forward but I couldn't move backwards at all these units have a a drum brake system that's mounted at the rear of the transmission and it's uh, the brake is actually on the drive shaft and what this thing does is when you put the shift lever into park it has a hydraulic system that then pulls a a, a hydraulic ram which has a spring inside which pulls a lever that engages this brake on the back of the transmission at the drive shaft <clears throat> when this thing failed it failed while I was in park of course now from what I've read most people I mean this can happen to you at any time anywhere you could have been at a gas station or I could have been any anywhere A lot going on. I'm sorry for it's, I'm confused trying to tell the story. I've got a million things going on today. We've got some beautiful weather here, and it's uh, <laughs> just busy. But back to the story. So the auto part, my brake locked up, and after about an hour's worth of reading, I found that there is a temporary fix. Like if this would have happened while I was at a or at a gas station or. All right, guys. I'm uh, I'm trying to lay on my back and and do this. I haven't even slid all the way up underneath of the coach yet, but I wanted to show you the actual brake unit that's on 
the back of the transmission and the front of the drive shaft. See, as you can see, it basically bolts straight to the drive shaft. And then mounts right at the back of the transmission. Alright, we're going to slide try to. And you can see, oh, it's all in here. This uh, cable that's coming out right here that runs up in front of the transmission. That thing goes to something I'm going to show you here in a little while. It's kind of like a, a distribution block where all these things meet. But this large, heavy-duty metal box is where you're going to end up having to replace this part. And again, I apologize about the camera angles and all, but it's the best I can do right now. Alright. Now I've already pulled the cover off of the side of this box. I did that this morning. But and I know it's dark in here and I don't have my headlight on. I left the damn thing in the house. Um I may have a flashlight in my pocket though. People ask me every day, why do you wear that damn headlamp? It's for reasons like this. I don't have to dig in my pocket for a flashlight. Um all right, you see that lime green sensor? That's what we're replacing. And if you can see, the uh, the sensor is leaking right out of the electrical connection. So from what I've read, that means that's going to be our issue. So what I have to do first is I have to drain this reservoir over here, which holds transmission fluid. And after I drain that, then I can re remove the sensor. So I'll be back once I get the new one on. Alright. There goes my drain pan. As you can see, I got the new sensor on. I haven't plugged it in yet because I'm letting the plug just kind of drip some of that um, transmission fluid had uh, gotten into the plug so I'm trying to clean some of that out a little bit won't be a big deal but alright so here's the hydraulic ram that engages the spring there's a spring inside of there and the spring this thing will pull when it uses the ram it pulls that spring tight which then pulls that cable and engages this brake and evidently the switch is what reads pressure on the fluid so there's also a relay in here We've got a few other electrical connections and we've got one more sensor up here on the top. I'm hoping we're not going to have to replace that one too, but we'll see. We're about to do a test right now. I can see that I'm a hair low on fluid, but that should not be low enough to make a difference. So. have to come back under here and put that cover back on if, uh, if this does work we got to plug it in What a mess. Jeez, I was clean before I went under there. So, keep that in mind. Alright. Not sure if y'all could tell when I had the camera under there, but I've got the motor home. 
jacked up on the passenger side with the hydraulic jacks. So before we can test this, and I do have my wheels chalked back here. I've got both of the dualies chalked with these heavy duty ones and I even threw a little block of wood behind my tag axle. But let's see. Start her up. Boy, she, she sounds good. Hadn't been running a couple of days either. All right, parking brake is set. I'm gonna cut my jacks on. Oops, sorry, you weren't even looking at them. So I cut the jacks on and I don't ever use the auto feature. Every time I've ever used auto, it uh, I wasn't happy with it. So I manually do mine all over. I can do my fronts up, my, my backs up, my side, one side. I can, I can really do just about anything with them that I want and I can be in complete control. So right now I'm just gonna let the passenger side down. So both sides are completely down right now. And just to show you real quick how these things work, I'm gonna jack the uh, front back up. I can pull that whole tire off the ground. So these hydraulic jacks really do make a big difference when come time to work on your unit. If you have to uh, change that tire, I mean that's a lot of help. Anyway, all right, so we're gonna let her back down. All the jacks are tucked in. Let's climb in. No idea. Well, we're still showing an auto park light on the dash. I was really hoping not to not to see that. It's working. We just went into reverse. Mm -hmm. Auto park light went off. Well. Looks like we're in good shape. Alright, very pleased. Motorhome is back operational. We are gonna put the jacks back down so I can get back under there. Cut the jacks on. And then raise her up. Well, once I sit down this evening and I've got caught up, I'll try to give you a, a better rundown, maybe even post a picture of the uh, the point where all those brake levers meet. But still got a lot to do this is the nicest weather day we're about 70 some degrees right now and I haven't seen this kind of weather in, in a long time so I've got to take advantage of it and got a lot to do <coughs> this motorhome here I just finished washing it I've got to seal the roof up tomorrow still waiting on some parts for that um, still got to change the oil and the engine and the generator so I've got a lot to get done but I'm gonna finish up mine so I can get that uh, parked and all situated and cleaned up and I'll talk to y'all in a little while.